Welcome back to Champions of Care, brought to you by Oakwood Healthcare. Today we're talking about sinuses, sinus issues, and here to talk to us about treatment options for patients with sinus issues is Dr. Frederick Lopatin with offices in Dearborn. Isn't that correct, Dr. That is Lopatin? Correct. So good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Now in the previous segment, we met Dr. Becker, who's mm -hmm. a family practice physician, and they know a, a lot about a lot of things, and he had sinus issues of his own, and knew he needed to see a specialist, an otolaryngologist, which I grew up calling ear, nose, and throat. So you're an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Can you tell us a little bit about Dr. Becker's case and what we can learn from it? Sure. Um, he's a perfect case for someone with polyps. Here's a gentleman that is very knowledgeable, who's a professional, who's actually a doctor and has had problems. He had these problems for a, lot, a long time, and he actually let them go for a long time because, like all people, you take some medicine, and he treated himself and got antibiotics and continued to do things to the point where it no longer was getting better. Then he came to see me. I took a look in his nose, and what I found right away was that he had these. These are polyps, and you can see them. What is a polyp, Dr. Lopatin? A polyp is like a normal growth of the tissue. It's kind of like an out pouching of the lining of the sinuses in the nose. Now it, you said it's a normal growth. It, it's normal tissue that grows out into the sinus cavity. So it's growing in the normal tissue growing in the wrong spot. Essentially. It's, it's normal tissue becoming almost like a little water balloon filling out. It's a mucosal lining that has now come out into the nose where it doesn't belong. Is that the only place um, that they get in, into trouble, these nasal polyps? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not like polyps when you think of polyps in your colon. Mm -hmm. They're not generally a precancerous thing. They're generally, allergies is the number one reason why they occur. Now, why is that? I don't think anybody's really come up with why that happens, but it has been found that most people that have polyps have had a lot of allergic problems, mm -hmm. and they believe it's now you have that swelling of the lining. Like I said, it's a normal lining that is now swollen and form these pockets. Now your patient, Dr. Becker, he, he knew something was wrong. Can an average person say, hey, I think I have polyps, or, or what do they sense? Most people wouldn't. Most people would complain that, you know, my head hurts, I can't breathe through my nose, you know what, now I can't smell. Those are the things that you start to notice with polyps. They start to lose their sense of smell, they start to lose their sense of taste, they get a lot of pressure and discomfort, and then they go to their family doctor, and generally that's where it's picked up. And how common are polyps? Um, I would say it's not very common, but for my practice, I see quite a lot of it. But in the population, it would not be that prevalent. Hmm. Now, I've heard about something else that I think is a sinus issue, but I'm not sure what it is. What's a deviated septum? Now, that's extremely common. I would say a lot of people have a deviated septum. And what that is, is if you notice here, here's the septum. And if you see, part of the septum now is pushed over. The septum is the part in your nose, and here's a CAT scan of it. It's that midline partition in your nose that separates one cavity from the other. Can you orient me to this? Where's the face? Where are the lips? This Where? is if you cut your head and, and you're looking into your head. This is the right cheek. From, the, the from above. Cheek. I'm looking from no, above. No, you're looking straight in. Oh, straight in. Okay. You're looking straight in. So this is the right cheek. That's the left cheek. This is that midline partition. There's an eyeball coming in. There's another eyeball ah, coming in. Ah, I can see it your now. Brain oh, is these, up here. Th these are teeth. And here's your teeth. I gotcha. Okay. So now that septum is that midline portion right there. And as you can see, it's not so midline over here. And then if you looked, now this is an endoscopic view or a picture like we put a little camera inside the mm -hmm, nose. Mm -hmm. You'll see that it's actually pushing in. To, this is the sinus. This is where the sinus is drained. This deviation actually pushes in. That's actually called a spur off the septum. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a further portion of a deviated septum. Could someone live their whole life and not realize they have a problem? Absolutely. Well, people might have problems, but they can live their whole life. A deviated septum a lot of times is more a nuisance than an actual, when we say a disease or an infection. It's not like that. It's more of a nuisance. It usually causes you not to be able to breathe as well. It causes blockage in blockage. It causes you to have a lot of drainage going down your throat sometimes. And sometimes it will even affect the eustachian tube because the way that drainage comes down the back of your nose 
and people will complain of popping in their ears and other things that can be caused by that. Okay, so let's kind of make a little list. The things that might uh, send a signal to someone that they have a sinus problem could be popping in their ears, a lot of runny nose, itchy face, what else? Well, itchy face is probably more you'll see in allergies, but the runny nose, if people have a lot of running, they'd have a dry cough, facial pressure or pain, spiking temperatures would be someone that would really? have uh, sinus problems, usually that's more infection. There are things called barosinusitis as well, which is basically a pressure sinusitis. Like when the weather is really bad out, right before it rains, some people complain of that pressure right in their forehead. Yeah, I know it's gonna rain today. And, and you see that quite a lot. And that can be from the sinuses swelling. And when the sinuses swell, that's when you can get bacterial sinusitis after that, or it can be just a constant swelling and release, which will cause people a lot of pressure and pain. Well, we'll be back with lots more good questions for you and good in information for our viewers after this short break.